Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about Chinese reminder theorem. It talks about reminders of certain number when divided by mutually coprime numbers. So the reminder theorem and the name might seem intimidating for some. But let's learn it through an example so that it will look uh, fabulous. So let's get started. Here is the question that we are going to solve before understanding the theorem. So first, it is given that a positive integer is divided by 3 and leaves a remainder of 2. It is divided by 5 and leaves a remainder of 3 and divided by 7 and leaves a remainder of 2. We are supposed to find the least such number and let's proceed using two methods. First, using normal and simple algebra. Second, we will be doing it using congruences. This is just to consolidate your understanding about reminders and expressing the theorem in some other way. So first, let's consider the number as n the positive integer mentioned in the question. Now it leaves a reminder of 2 when divided by 3. So let's denote it by modulo 3, mod 3. And it leaves a reminder of 3 when divided by 5. So it is 3 mod 5. And it leaves a reminder of 2 when divided by 7. So 2 mod 7. And we require least such number n. Now, you know, this Chinese reminder theorem states that there exists a unique solution for this equation. Modulo or the reminder obtained by n when divided by 3 times 5 times 7 is unique. There exists only one solution and that one solution is unique. So, we get 3 times 5 times 7 as 105 and the reminder r when divided by 105 is the actual solution for n. That means n must be of the form 105k plus r. That's it. This is the statement of this theorem. But this is a little bit vague way of saying it. Let me express it clearly at the end and do notice that the numbers in the modulo or the numbers which are dividing n must be mutually coprime. Here the numbers dividing capital N are 3, 5 and 7. And clearly they are mutually coprime, right? That is no to share a common factor other than 1. So GCD of 3, 5 is 1 and GCD of 5, 7 is 1 and GCD of 7, 3 is also 1. And of course, finding the remainder r requires some effort. And let's do that. First, notice that n must be of the form 7k plus 2 because it leaves a remainder 2 when divided by 7. We know that k is the quotient when it is divided by 7. So the numbers of this form are 2, 9, 16, 23, and as you can see, they form a arithmetic progression with common difference 7. So 37, 44, 51, 58, 65, and so on. Actually, you have to write it till 105, less than or equal to 105. Because we know that the solution can be any number from 0 to 104. So you have to think about all the numbers less than 105. The last number would be 100, but you need not write all the numbers at first. Just try to get some number out of these that satisfies these equations. And now, coming to the second constraint, it should leave a reminder of 3 when divided by 5. So thus it must be also of the form 5k plus 3. Now, choose the numbers that are of the form 5k plus 3 in this sequence or in this arithmetic progression. So those numbers must end with 8 or 3. So just select those numbers that end with 8 or 3. 23, 58 and so on. There could be some more. 
in the subsequent numbers. And now, the third condition states that it should be of the form 3k plus 2. So out of these selected numbers in the second step, further filter these numbers that are of the form 3k plus 2. So clearly 23 is of the form 3k plus 2 because 21 is a multiple of 3 and you add 2 to reach 23. So 2 is the remainder when divided by 3. Hence 23 clearly satisfies all 3 conditions, right? And hence, R equals 23. That's it. There is no further question that you have to ponder about. And you can conclude that 23 mod 105 is the definite result. Because the Chinese reminder theorem states that there are no other solution mod 105. So even if you think about the other numbers, you will not be able to deduce any. So we get that the solution is 23 mod 105 or in other words 105k plus 23. So here I did not use any properties of congruences and without it we reached the conclusion. And do notice that while solving through this method start from the largest number so that you need not write a lot of numbers in the initial defining sequence of those numbers of the form 7k plus 2. So all solutions of the form 105k plus 23 describes the solution set of n. For example, k equal to 0 will give you 23, k equal to 1 will give you 128 and so on. Even k can be negative. But here we are uh, thinking about positive integers, right? So we should disregard k being negative. So the least number would be 23. Let's conclude the same using properties of congruences. This is done just to express the final theorem in terms of congruences. That's it. So this should be a quick one. Method 2 involving congruences. So we know a certain number leaving a reminder of R modulo certain number can be expressed and is congruent to R mod N. And let's express our conditions in this format. So N would be congruent to 2 mod 3. And simultaneously, it must be congruent to 3 mod 5. And it should also be congruent to 2 mod 7. Notice that there is a subtle difference between the reminder that it leaves and congruences. There is a usual misconception by students that Congruences should represent the reminder, but actually it need not. So you have to understand these subtle nuances here. N can be congruent to any number modulo N, which need not be the reminder. But the only defining criteria is that N should divide capital N minus T. That's it. So let's have that in mind that instead of writing N dividing capital N minus T, it's a way to represent using congruences that n is congruent to t mod n. Now, we know that n is of the form 7k plus 2. So let's equate this to the mod in a 5 equation that is congruent to 3 mod 5. So moving the 2 to the other side, one would get 7k congruent to 1 mod 5. But here you go, mod in a 5, 1 can be replaced with 21 because 5 divides 21 minus 1, isn't it? So 5 divides 21 minus 1. So this shall imply 21 is congruent to 1 mod 5. So if I replace 1 with 21, we can cancel the 7 in the LHS, right? So this imply k is congruent to 3 mod 5. So we got k congruent to 3 mod 5. Let's substitute it back in the first equation of n equal to 7k plus 2. So this imply k is of the form some 5t plus 3. Substituting it back, we get n equal to 7 times 5t plus 3 plus 2, giving us 35t plus 23. So you can sense the solution being already reached, but be patient, we are yet to solve for one more condition. That is n congruent to 2 mod 3. Now this has to be congruent to 2 mod 3. 
and moving 23 to the rhs you would get 35t congruent to minus 21 mod 3 but 21 is already divisible by 3 right so 21 is actually congruent to 0 mod 3 as we know any number is congruent to its remainder when divided by the divisor so 0 is the remainder so i can equate it to 0 through congruence and i can also move 35 to the rhs by dividing 35 both side and you get t is congruent to 0 mod 3 and a remark that i should mention here when you divide a congruence equation please make sure that you are dividing a number that is co prime to the number in modulo should not divide you should not divide a number that shares a common factor with the number inside modulo that is not right there are some issues regarding it which comes under the properties of congruences one can also work through it so t is congruent to 0 imply t can be written as some 3s so substituting it back in the original equation of 35t plus 23 we get 105s plus 23 with the same 23 now we got a solution n equal to 105s plus 23 but what does chinese remainder theorem do here it just says that this is the solution and there are no other solution modulo 105 that is n congruent to 23 mod 105 is the only solution modulo 105 again do notice that 23 is not the only solution it's the only solution modulo 105 so one can also reach the conclusion through congruences so you should not think that crt is not used here in certain cases such cancellations and operations might not be trivial and we have to use crt to conclude something for example what if you have some variables instead of those numbers so during those circumstances crt plays a crucial role so now let's define the crt so crt stands for the chinese remainder theorem and it states that if you have simultaneous set of congruences say x congruent to r1 modulo n1 and then r2 modulo n2 so on till rk modulo nk as we had in the last problem please uh, construct some analogy between the theorem and the example we studied so there are k simultaneous set of congruences where the numbers n1 n2 till nk are mutually co prime what's the meaning of mutually co prime it means that if you take any two of these numbers n1 to nk they are co prime that is gcd of ni comma nj is one then the theorem states that there is a unique solution for x modulo the product of the numbers n1 n2 till nk that is x is congruent to some number r modulo n1 times n2 till nk so let me quickly give you a motivational question based on the chinese remainder theorem it's like an extension of it so students of my class are also pondering about this question what if you have two congruences congruent to r1 modulo n1 and congruent to r2 modulo n2 if x satisfies these two simultaneous set of congruences what is the condition for the existence of for the existence of solution for x it turns out that in some cases of n1 and n2 there might not exist a solution and do remember that here we are talking about the condition in which gcd of n1 and n2 is not equal to 1 this is not necessarily 1 we have considered the case of equal to 1 let's assume that it's not equal to 1 here so think about the condition for existence and if it exists what are the solution if exists what are the solution so you may add your ideas and inferences 
in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Meet you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye.